not all about wounded warriors show their introduction clearly. Let me introduce you to two British Royal Marines, J.J. Thomas and Louis Nevercock, our friends, who have trained, served, and recovered together. This is their story. Five years ago, I was living my dream to serve on the front line in Afghanistan as a Royal Marine Commander. I was doing what I was trained to do. I was doing my job. I was serving my country. I was doing what I loved. I was doing an incredible thing with incredible people. Twenty-year-old lads the main have only met six months before, but we were a family. Our section wouldn't just die for one another, we lived for one another. But one day, in a split second, everything changed. An explosion tore through our section. It destroyed what was in its path. It wounded, it maimed, it killed. Then you return home, and everything you had known has changed. You can feel isolated. You can feel hopeless, broken. You can feel responsible and guilty. You can feel numb and overwhelmed. But fortunately, that wasn't me. Because although my body was wounded, my mind was not. And a part of me was still the JJ that everybody knew before Afghanistan. But that dark world that I just described was life for my mate Louis. And although the blast had not touched him, it had affected him. Louis was the first to patch me up, and after the blast, it's because of him that I'm stood here tonight. But my survival comes at a price. IEDs are indiscriminate, and there's no blueprint for disability. <coughs> so recovery takes different forms. For me, it was a week in a coma, 30 plus surgeries, 500 surgical staples removed from my body, six weeks with my arm sewn into my stomach, and a lifetime of my wife doing my buttons up for me. Now fortunately, I entered a world where we can celebrate physical disability. But unfortunately, it doesn't always stretch to mental health. In my experience, the journey to recovery is not a straight line, and you may not always be traveling forward, but the path is clear. However, for mental health, the path can be dark and unpredictable, and far too often it's travelled on alone. Now, Invictus made me feel like a rock star. It gave me the opportunity to inspire. It opened my eyes to a new world. And although winning gold in 2014 felt like a happy ending to my story, it was actually the beginning of a new one. As I returned this year to help present at these games and tell the incredible stories of these men and women, like my mate Louie. I will not be competing in the Invictus Games, though it still has the ability to change my life. It was not long ago that I would struggle just to be out in public, in public getting on with my life. Now I stand on a stage before you guys with my old pal JJ and Morgan Freeman. <laughs> The Invictus Games reaches further than just its competitors. It touches friends, families, caregivers and supporters. The Invictus Games can change your life. You just have to take that first step. I may still have dark days ahead of me, but I can assure you the next four days won't be among them. You can change your life and you can achieve your goals. Better still, perhaps goals that you have once written on. No. This could be a medal at these games. It could be a great adventure like climbing Everest. Or it could just be taking your family out to the park. And your first step could be getting on a bike. It could be trying a new sport. Or it could literally be taking your first step. Or it could be doing what I did and just talking to someone. On behalf of myself and JJ, we wish you guys the best of luck at the Invictus Games. Thank you.